please tell us a little bit more about uh, deep reinforcement learning for AFM. Yeah, so today I would like to uh, tell you about how we train the deep reinforcement learning agent to manipulate individual atoms. So this work is a collaboration of myself and several of my colleagues from uh, Alto University and the Finnish Center for Artificial Intelligence. Um, yeah, so uh, in this project, we also try to explore how uh, machine learning can help us do experiments. Uh, in particular, we focus on using deep reinforcement learning uh, technique here. So in reinforcement learning, we usually have a agent. Um, so in, in this case, we will represent it with a deep neural network, and we wanted to achieve a certain goal. So uh, for example, it could be that we wanted to uh, control a robot arm to manip manipulate an object to a target position. And this is how the training would go. So at each time step, the agent will receive um, an input information about the environment. So this is called a state. And so in the robot arm example, this information could involve like the position of the object or the, and the target position and maybe the position of the arms. And based on this information, the agent will take a action. So in the robot arm example, this might mean that it could move the robot arm around. And then, and then this action will have some sort of effect on the environment. Um, based on the, this effect and the goal we have in this problem, we will give the agent a reward. So this reward is very important because this is how we encode the goal um, and communicate it to the agent. In reinforcement learning, the agents are usually designed to maximize the overall reward. So if after collecting some enough training data and this reward signal, the agent should be able to know how to achieve the goal. Um, up to now, deep reinforcement learning has been mostly used in games or simulated environments because that's where it's easier to get training data. But recently, um, as deep reinforcement learning become more uh, efficient and stable, they have also been used in some real world uh, scientific experiments. Um, for example, in this example, they use, use it to control superpressure balloons. And recently, there is also a work where they use, use it to control nuclear fusion experiments. Um, so here in our work, we want to expand the application to atomic scale experiments. Um, the question we want to answer here is, can we train the deep reinforcement learning agent to manipulate individual atoms? So maybe a lot of you are familiar um, the experiments people usually um, do to manipulate atoms are in scanning tunneling microscope. Um, so this is how um, scanning my, the microscope look like in the lab. So inside this big vacuum chamber, we have a, uh, a very sharp tip like this. And when it, um, when it get very close to a substrate, there will be a quantum tunneling electrical current that flows between them. And this electrical current is very sensitive to the material of the tip and the substrate and also their distance. And this sensitivity allow us to um, take atomic resolution images of the substrate. And besides imaging, it also allow us to um, manipulate individual atoms um, and create uh, different type of structures like uh, like this here. Um, so after this technique was invented in the 1990s, um, uh, a lot of researchers has been using it to do all sort of uh, different things. For example, um, 
it's a very good way to express their creativity, like making a movie or some art. And in um, condensed matter physics, um, researchers have been using has been using this technique to assemble new type of materials with properties that doesn't exist in nature. Um, and they can do it atom by atom by precisely placing atoms in where they want. And it's also a very, um, maybe a, a unique way to push the boundary of how small we can make uh, computational material uh, devices. For example, in these three works here, researchers have been using uh, this technique to make um, um, extremely small memory logic gates uh, and Boltzmann machine based on uh, moving around individual atoms. Um, so as you can imagine, to build all these structures and maybe operating these devices, it's, uh, it will require really thousands or maybe even more operations, uh, manipulation steps. And this is extremely labor intensive in the lab. So one of the important motivation for our work here is that if deep reinforcement learning agent can take over the atom manipulation part, we will be able to um, do this atomic assemble, assembly uh, autonomously. Um, okay. And Okay, so before jumping into the details of our experiments, um, you might be wondering if it's difficult to manipulate atoms and what are the challenges that the reinforcement learning agent need to solve. So um, in fact, it's not difficult to move atoms. Um, we do it unintentionally in the lab all the time and also in our life. Um, but what is difficult is to be able to move the atom precisely to put it exactly where we want it. And this is difficult because it requires us to uh, have a very good control of the interaction between the tip and the atom. And to do that, we need to set the correct manipulation parameter depending on the exact atomic configuration of the tip. Uh, and that is something we don't usually know. And that's also something um, that would change with time spontaneously. And so with all this knowledge, it becomes quite challenging to, um, to reach this position. Okay, so here I'll talk, start talking about our experiments. Um, so in order to use um, any reinforcement learning technique, um, before that we have to put the atom manipulation into the uh, reinforcement learning framework. So first we need to define the goal of, that the agent should try to achieve. Um, here we define the goal as that the agent should try to, should learn to manipulate atoms precisely in this uh, stochastic environment. So for it to learn to achieve this goal, we need to def uh, design a learning environment. So it's a bit like a, designing a game that it can play. And there is uh, several standard parts that we will need to set. So here we decide that um, in each training episode, the agent can um, make up to five manipulation steps. And at each time step, the agent will receive some information about the environment, um, which is called the state that include the position of the atom and the position of the target. Based on this information, the agent can take an action um, that involves moving the tip around and while applying a current and the bias. So here you might see that um, this is a bit similar to the atomic arm uh, example. So here it's a bit like we are trying to design an atomic, uh, uh, not, not atomic arm, robotic arm. So here it's a bit like we are designing a robotic arm that is capable of moving atoms. And, and then we need to this decide on the reward that the agent will receive. So here, how we design it is that the reward will be separated into two parts here. So the first part depends on how much the manipulation error has improved based on the specific action. And the second part depends on whether the agent was able to move the atom uh, towards the target position um, within some tolerance range. 
Okay, so these are the rules. Um, okay, forgot. And, and to do, so, um, yeah, so this was our first experiment. And here we choose the material system uh, is, uh, the one we choose is a silver. So everything here is silver, include the tip are coated in silver and the substrate and the atom we manipulate are also silver. Um, um, okay. So then we are ready to um, apply deep reinforcement learning models. So here, the, the model that we choose to use is called the softer actor critic. So the word soft here um, refers to the fact that here, the agents are not only encouraged to maximize the reward, it's also encouraged to maximize um, the entropy of its action, which means that um, it should try to achieve the goal, but you should try to do it, um, it but it, but you should try to do it in the most diverse way possible. So you should try to find all the possible solution to this problem. And on top of this model, we also use some experience replay technique um, that can help us improve data efficiency. So here we use the high sign experience replay. So what this does is that it helps the agent to learn from experiences where it, it actually moved the atom to the wrong positions. And another um, technique we use is the prioritizing recent experience replay. So what it does is it encourages the agent to learn more heavily from recent experiences and less from ancient experiences. And here is our training results. Um, so during training, we, we monitored the, these four values. Um, and as you can see here in the beginning of training, uh, the agent was receiving very low reward and has very low success rate and has a very high manipulation error. Um, but towards the end of the training, the agent was the reward improved and it could reach 100% success rate, uh, which means it's 100% of the time it's able to move the atom to the target position within the tolerance range. And, um, and here we can also see that it was, it's able to uh, reach a manipulation error that is very low. So this is below uh, the theoretically um, possible error um, determined by the geometry of this silver 111 surface. And the episode length also decreased, which means that the agent has been trying to uh, complete this task with as few manipulation step as possible. So here we terminated the training when the agent re uh, reached 100% success rate for an extended amount of time. And that took us about 6,000 manipulations. And um, that means 40 hours in the lab. And, and okay, and here we also mark uh, the three times where uh, we observed that the manipulation tip has significantly changed. And, um, and you can see here that every time when the tip changes significantly, the performance will decrease, but after some retraining, the performance will improve again. So that is uh, an indication that the, the continue, the uh, deep reinforcement learning's ability to continue to learn um, actually make them quite adaptable to environmental changes. And that is something um, that, um, that is maybe better than any sort of fixed manipulation parameters we would usually use. So here we show that um, for different tip conditions, um, we compare deep reinforcement learning agents performance with a, sets of, a set of um, manipulation parameters, which are the horizontal dashed line here. And you can see here that um, these parameters that are hand tuned by experimentalists, they don't always do well. So every time the tip change, they might just uh, deteriorate. Uh, but the deep reinforcement learning agent, after some training, it can always reach near optimal performances. Um, 
So here, then finally here, it's a video that shows what a trend agent is doing in this learning environment. So in every episode, we will give a new random target to the agent and, and it should try to move the atom, which is the blue dot here um, towards this position. And here you can see that it's, um, it's capable of doing that. So uh, once we have this trained agent, then we are um, ready to um, combine it with some other um, cl classical algorithms and make a fully autonomous atomic assembly software. So we combine it with um, two path planning uh, algorithms, the Hungarian algorithm and the rapidly exploring random tree algorithm. And here as a demonstration, we use them to um, make this 42 atom structure. So um, they, it was able to do it autonomously uh, and with atomic precision. Yeah, so in summary, um, um, we showed that yes, deep reinforcement learning agent is able to learn to manipulate atoms and it's able to do it with uh, optimal precision and against changes in the environment. And, and it was able to do, it was, and the training um, duration and the amount of data it required was reasonable. And so going beyond this work, um, we are interested in um, using similar technique to do more challenging tasks in the lab. Um, so in manipulation tasks, that could mean manipulating uh, molecules or atoms that are more difficult to manipulate and even things that maybe we don't, as experimentalists, we don't know how to manipulate yet. And uh, here is uh, the paper that describes uh, our work here. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have questions already. Um, thank you very much for this amazing talk. So could you elaborate a little bit more on the multiple atom case? Because I, I imagine if you want to build this 42 atom structure, so the, there's a little bit more decisions to take, right? Because the, the agent has to know where to take the atoms from and in which order to build up the structure. So is this given like sequentially a single atom, 42 single atom manipulations that the agent is supposed to do? Or does it decide you know, how, how to build the structure from scratch? Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, so so here the deep reinforcement learning part, the agent only know how to handle one atom to one position. So um, to build a bigger structure, we kind of outsource the rest of the thing to uh, these two path planning techniques. So the Hungarian algorithm is, uh, um, so we have 42 atoms and 42 positions. It should try to, um, minimize the, dis the overall distance, the, all the atoms need to travel and the um, rapidly exploring random tree algorithm. So this is um, not an optimal algorithm. So it's, uh, so after we're deciding, okay, atom A go to position um, one, um, you should try to find a path that doesn't, um, that protect it from colliding with other atoms. So, so the collision is also a problem here, but but it doesn't know how to do that in the shortest path, but just in the safe way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the for the really great talk. Just maybe one silly question. Maybe you said it and I missed it, but this is in a simulated environment, right? This is not actually in the lab. This is actually in the lab. And you did this in one go without doing this in a simulated environment. Um, we did in the simulated environment just to make sure that everything works as it should, but otherwise um, we start with a randomly initialized agent in the lab that was that didn't see any simulated data. Okay, pretty cool. Thank you. Okay, and last question from Kevin. Thank you very much for the nice talk. I was wondering whether like if we change the chemistry of the substrate, would we need to restart from scratch the machine learning? Or yeah, what, what's your opinion on this? Yeah, so um, 
Um, we didn't try that, but I, uh, I would think that some level of retraining will be required. Um, and also, um, so uh, I didn't mention this, but like in the actions that the agent is allowed to take, there is certain range of bias, for example, you can only um, Move, uh, apply a certain range of bias. So if what we want to do is like out of range, um, then you will not be able to handle it. Um, so it doesn't have like this general intelligence. It's a, just an optimization problem. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, then let's move on. Thank you again, Iju. Thank you. And our next talk comes from nearby, from Cynthia Stevanovska from Ljubljana. Uh, 